Whatever it is that you want, you will need to make sacrifices in order to get it. This is such a simple concept that even a child would understand it. I want to own a new toy car. In order to do so, I require money. To make that money, I must sacrifice my most prized asset, time, in order to make the necessary cash. We all pay lip service to this idea, but how many of us are truly willing to put ourselves on the line and really sacrifice ourselves in order to get something that we want? To look at it another way, what might possibly induce someone to go to extreme, even ridiculous and potentially humiliating lengths to get something? The only thing is a desire that is so strong that it burns in your soul like fire. An all-consuming conflagration that is both fierce and unforgiving. Because it is only when you want something that badly that you will be prepared to go to any lengths to get it. Ed Lattimore, the former pro boxer and now self-help guru, has single-handedly created a meme about crackheads on Twitter and about how crackheads will outwork anyone on the planet just for a crumb of the good stuff. I myself have a very addictive personality and throughout my 20s, I was a full-blown alcoholic. I had no money. Well, I wasn't a fully functional human being in any real sense of the word. And any money I did obtain went straight on the drink. But often that wasn't enough. Often I'd run out of cash towards the end of the week, but not getting alcohol wasn't an option. I had to have it. And so I would do anything I had to do to get it, including borrowing money from friends and from people who weren't my friends, lying and even stealing. The means were dirty and sometimes humiliating, but the end was always achieved. I always got the alcohol that I needed. Some of the sacrifices I made for this deeply destructive cause were losing sleep, working ridiculous hours in bars and nightclubs, alienating friends, family and colleagues by continually borrowing money from them and not always paying it back, and compromising my own moral codes by lying and stealing. It should also be said that I sacrificed my health both my physical and mental health, in the process. These were big sacrifices. And believe me, the losses I endured took many years to recover. But I made them because I was so in the thrall of alcohol that I had no choice but to do so. It is crucial that you realise that the sacrifices that you must make in order to attain this goal or that goal are most likely bigger than you would ever want to imagine. And sacrifice is not pretty, kind or appealing. It doesn't coddle the ego of the actor. It doesn't feel good. It involves losing things. Yes, in order to get what you want, you may lose sleep, friends, family, a relationship, time, holidays, kids' birthday parties. Are you prepared for that? It's all very well telling others and yourself that you would give anything to get good at this or that particular skill set. to attain a particular goal in your life. But until you start actively losing things in pursuit of your dreams, then you are really just role playing. In the specific case of dating and sex, most men claim to want to improve their prospects, but how far are they really willing to go to get there? Recently, a troll came into the comments section of a video I made claiming the game doesn't work and it's all about looks, etc. When another commentator challenged him, suggesting that he had not made enough approaches, the original poster hit back and proudly proclaimed that he had, in fact, cold approached 400 women over the past three years. Now, on first sight, that may seem like a decent number on which to form an opinion, but let's dig a little deeper. That means he approached approximately 133 women per year. Again, that doesn't sound too bad, but what does that work out per month? 11 approaches. And per week? 2.75. And per day? 0.39. Does that really sound like the work ethic of a person determined to solve his dating problems to bring greater abundance into his life? No. Such a person will be doing at least three times as much, if not more, 
Remember that James Tusk recommends a minimum of 30 approaches per week to guys, which works out at a very manageable three or four a day. Easily accomplished on your way to work, in the supermarket or the coffee shop or the bar later in the day. For myself, when I was in my 20s and living in Manchester in the UK, where there is a relatively small fashionable social scene, I soon realised that I was attracting more and better looking lovers than most of my better looking, taller male rivals, but I was also getting rejected way more as well. Regrettably, it is always thus. The man who is most successful on the battlefield of love is also the man who gets shot down the most. But I was driven by something more powerful than such petty concerns as whether it might be embarrassing to be turned down at the bar by Abigail with the bewitching eyes and the purple dress. I was driven by a compulsion to make that was so powerful and all-encompassing that you might have called it an addiction. Incidentally, whether sex addiction is a thing or not will be the subject for another of these videos. But because my desire was so great, the sacrifices that I needed to make in order to attain it, being rudely rejected, looking foolish or needy at times, getting into altercations in nightclubs, spending money that I didn't have on dates and so on, barely seemed like sacrifices at all. They were merely the collateral required for playing the game, a fee I would willingly pay 10 times over if it meant the attainment of licentious bliss with this or that young beauty. At this point, I sense my critics rolling their eyes and heading for the comments section to write about how supplicatory it is to make sacrifices simply for a shot at intimacy with a woman. And yes, I would agree. I don't recommend to anyone the life that I was leading back in my 20s. In fact, if I could go back, I would definitely do things differently. Your 20s should be about building to, towards your future. But there we are. None of us can change the past. So I don't refute the assertion that making sacrifices in order to have an abundant dating life can be viewed as the wrong course of action. But similarly, there are those who would argue forcefully that sacrificing your time, sleep, health and family life in order to build a business is bad and that you should strive for a balanced life. I see their point, but at some stage you need to look at things as they really are rather than how you would like them to be. The modern dating marketplace is hard. Building a business is hard. Achieving anything that many other people cover is hard. What are you going to do about it? Are you going to sit around making excuses or are you going to do what needs to be done to win? In life, there are really only two parts. You either do what needs to be done to win or you don't. It's as simple as that. And if the sacrifices you need to make in order to win seem unpalatable to you, then you probably simply don't want the prize that badly. If that's you, then what can you do about it? To be entirely honest, there are no easy answers. As much as I want to help you, I can't manufacture desire for you out of thin air. You need to look inside yourself for that. In the case of women and dating in particular, you must focus on the end game and fix that result that you want so badly in your mind that it burns white hot behind your eyes. You want to date a string of Latvian lingerie models? Super. You want a serious long-term girlfriend who is beautiful, nurturing and kind? Great. Whatever you want, visualize it and keep it in sharp focus always. Also, eradicate anything that might interfere with or water down your desire. For example, cut out porn. Cut out fapping, for the most part. Cut out escorts, if that's your thing. Make it so there is only one way to attain the end that you require and in time, however arduous, you will surely take that path, for you will leave yourself with no choice. If you'd like a free call with me to discuss your own particular dating situation, then hit the link in the description below. You can also check out my collection of 11 books about dating, sex and the dating marketplace called Renegade Dating Blueprint. Again, the link is in the description below. See you next time.